Hello my stunning friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new, my name is Rachel and welcome to a new reading vlog. In this week's reading vlog, I'm just going to be mood reading through my March TBR. I say that, but my current read actually wasn't on my March TBR, which is pretty typical for me. But there are a lot of books that I'm really excited to get to that I did set in my March TBR and I will be reading some of those in this video as well. So let's get straight into what I am currently reading and let you know how I'm feeling about those books. So the first book that I wanted to talk about with you all, as I said, it's not on my March TBR, but I just finished finished an absolutely incredible book and that was When the Moon Hatched by Sarah A. Parker and I am kicking myself because I did not vlog my reading experience and I really wish that I did because I absolutely loved it. It is a super strong five-star book. I have never read a fantasy romance like that in my entire life and it was beautiful and poetic and heartbreaking and just so incredible and so rich and the world building like Everything about that book just gripped me from page one, and I'm really sorry that I did not vlog it because I wish that I could have shared that experience with you all, but... I'll talk about that more in my March wrap up. But essentially after finishing that book, I stared at the wall for like 30 minutes because that ending. And then I decided before I went into more fantasy romance, I wanted to have a little bit of a palette cleanser. So I decided to pick up Done and Dusted by Lila Sage. This is obviously a small town romance. And like, can we take a moment for this cover? This is so cute. This art style is everything. And I'm really happy that I picked this book up because this is so much fun thus far. I did read the first 100 pages last night and I absolutely flew through them and I'm having a ton of fun with this. This is Brother's Best Friend and our main character. She is a very famous barrel racer, but after suffering an accident on one of her horses, she decides to come home to her small town in Wyoming called Meadowlark and spend some time at her family's ranch. She also ends up running into one of her brother's best friends and his name is Luke Brooks. Luke was sort of like unofficially adopted into her family when they were younger and he was always known as a playboy and a bad boy, but after Emmy and Luke see each other for the first time in several years, there's definitely an attraction and a bit of like this for bit an aspect to their dynamic. So this is a ton of fun so far. It definitely does give me Chestnut Springs vibes. The only like small negative that I have to say about this book is in the beginning, things do feel very like surface level. Like we get some descriptions of things, but we're just very quickly going through things, establishing these are how the characters are. Okay, let's move forward. And ideally I would like a little bit more of that to be shown. I would like a little bit more of that to be dove into, but this is like a short book. And as far as entertainment goes, I'm having a great time. I know that recently I talked about that I haven't been connecting with contemporary romance and I just don't really know how I feel about it. But I think that I have discovered about myself that there is an exception to that. And that might just be small town romance. Romance. I love a small town contemporary romance. I don't know what it is, but I eat it up. I really do. Obviously the Chestnut Springs series I haven't shut up about for two years. I really liked Love Redesigned by Lauren Asher, which is another small town romance. And then this is set in this beautiful, like very picturesque small town in Wyoming. And I want to go there so bad. I want to go on a ranch. I'm kind of afraid of horses, but I'll give it a try if I can hang out with Emmy and Luke. And truly there's just something very cozy and wholesome about small town romances that really work for me. So I think that might be a bit of an exception to my struggling with contemporary romances overall. But yeah, this book is really fun. I'm very excited by it. The banter is really cute. There's a ton of tension and they are just very flirty and I'm really excited to see how things go. So this is a great palette cleanser and I'm really enjoying myself. All right, and then this morning I did want to get a head start on the next book that I wanna read in this vlog and that is North Queen by Nicola Teich. So this is a fantasy romance. I believe it is a completed trilogy. And this book follows our main character, Nora. And when the book starts, Starts, Nora wakes up in the middle of the forest and she has absolutely no idea who she is, where she is, why she got there, and what is going on. Very quickly after she wakes up and she's trying to kind of get her bearings, she is discovered by the commander of the Mercian army and she is actually from the kingdom of Mercia. So this commander, his name is Alexander, he has been searching for her for years and he finds her and he's like, oh my god, thankfully we found you. And he brings her back home to take her rightful place as the future queen of Mercia. But Nora is having a really hard time because once again, she has absolutely no idea who she is, like complete amnesia, no idea what's going on. I can definitely tell that there is some history between Alexander and Nora. I don't know if they were lovers or if they were together or if they're like mates or something, I don't know. But there is definitely some type of attraction between them and Alexander is very hesitant to reveal all of that to Nora at this moment. But I did just find out that she is set to be married to someone else. And I have seen people put like the trope advertisements for this book as it being a love triangle. So we'll see how that goes. So I'm only a little bit into this book. And I don't want to say like too much because I haven't really given the book a fair shot yet, but I don't know how I feel about the amnesia trope. I mean, she doesn't literally have amnesia. They don't say that in the book, but that's just what I'm going to call it. I don't know how I feel about that trope. I 
don't know what it is about this, but I think it's just not my favorite for like our main character to have no idea what is going on, where she is, and I don't know, something about it is just not hitting quite the same as just a typical fantasy romance. So that's where I'm at right now, but I have a ton of book left and I really don't want to judge this book too harshly when I'm only on page like 88 or something like that. But I do just want to set that precedent that I just don't know how I feel about the start of this book, but I am hoping that as Nora starts to remember things and starts to meet different people, hopefully we'll have a little like relationship drama. I would love that. I do hope that I will kind of get into the story more, but I'm just feeling okay about this right now. All right, and then the final book that I would like to read this week in this week's vlog is Thousand Ruins by Helen Shore. This is the second book in the Legends of Thesmar series. And the first book, Blood and Steel, I initially rated three stars, but because I just kept thinking about it, I ended up giving it a three and a half star rating. It's not perfect, but I definitely see a lot of potential in that first book and I am very excited to continue on with the series. That book follows our main character who trains as a warrior in a world where women are not allowed to train as warriors, but she kind of has this chosen one thing going on, ends up training as an apprentice under the very brutish and handsome Wilder Hawthorne. He is a war sword, which is like legendary in their world. And the two of them have this kind of like reluctant friends, two lovers, two enemies, two, I don't really know, so I'm excited to see what happens in this book. And I do hope that I just really fall in love with the series with book two. I did like the first book. I just wasn't like, oh my God, obsessed, but I really want to be obsessed. So hopefully we can achieve that together this week. So those are my plans for this week and I'm very excited. Hopefully I can come out of this reading vlog with some new favorites. And I think I'm going to go do some chores around the house and listen to more of the North Queen audiobook. And then we'll give you guys reading updates in a little bit. Hey guys, so it is a few hours later and I don't have any reading updates for you, but I I did just get a bunch of bookish items delivered. So I thought it'd be fun if we do a little bit of an unboxing together and then I'll give you guys reading updates a little bit later, but let's go through these packages. All right, so number one. So this is annotation tabs. I am, I think, very slowly going to re-enter my annotation era. And that is because of When the Moon Hatched by Sarah A. Parker. So I ended up annotating this book. I got to like page 50 and the book was already giving me five star feels. And so I started annotating at that point. And it was really fun because I have not annotated a book in such a long time. So this was a ton of fun and just made the experience really special. And I really liked it. So I decided to order more tabs just so I had a bunch on hand and I'm excited. I'm not sure what I'm going to annotate next. I'm contemplating doing an annotation of Heat of the Everflame because I know that I'm really gonna like that book, but we'll see. So happy to have a bunch of beautiful tabs in case I need them. All right, number two, we have more tabs. I forgot that I did order two sets. Okay, what are the differences? Oh, these are, okay, so this is just a bigger version of this. I didn't realize that. All right, but that's fine. More the merrier. Happy to have a ton of tabs. Now I really do need to like fully re-enter my annotation era. It would be cool if I tried to annotate like one book a month because I do genuinely enjoy it. It just takes a little bit longer, so I just don't do it as often, but I don't know. I'll think about that. All right, and the next we have this package, which obviously has a book in it. And this is stunning, first of all, but this is Fates and Furies by Helen Shore. So this is the third book in the Legends of Thesmar series. I'm going to be reading Vows and Ruins this week and this is the next book in the series after that. I'm very excited to pick this up. I've heard incredible things about this one as well. The green is really pretty so I do hope that I end up loving this. And then the next package, oh my gosh, okay this is also so stunning. So this is The Rose and the Dagger by Renee Audier. This is the second book in the Wrath and the Dawn duology and I read Wrath and the Dawn last month and I really loved it. Super strong four star and I actually went ahead and ordered the hardcover edition of the Wrath and the Dawn and then the sequel. I love this. This blue was so, so pretty. And then the last package, I know that this has a book and then another item that's kind of random, but I am very excited about it. So first of all, we have the hardcover edition of The Wrath and the Dawn. So beautiful. Look at these two stunning books together. I love this. I am keeping my paperback edition of The Wrath and the Dawn as well. I just wanted another set of this series. All right. And then I got a hydro flask, if you can tell by the logo there. I wanted a smaller water bottle because my Stanley cup is ginormous, which I love and like that's the point, but it's just kind of a lot to lug around. So I wanted something that was a little bit easier and lighter. I got this super gorgeous purple water bottle. It honestly looks way more blue on camera, but it's definitely purple, kind of like periwinkle 
ish in real life but this is super cute this is let me see 24 ounces and it does have the straw which i'm very excited about so those are all of the bookish kind of items that i got delivered today i'm gonna go read and do laundry and try to chase away the sunday scaries i will talk to you guys later my loves happy monday so let's do some reading updates because i have made a ton of progress in north queen i think the last time we talked i was on page 88 and i am now on page 382 so i did read a good chunk of this book last night and wanted to share my thoughts with you all before i finished so the last time we talked nora she came back to her kingdom she was refamiliarizing herself with her family with the castle she lived in with her duties as the new queen she did get crowned as queen kind of very quickly once she got back and she also learned that she is to be wed to a neighboring kingdom's king to form an alliance against the very evil shadow king who is threatening war to both of their kingdoms. Nora is not super happy about this having to be in this arranged marriage but she also feels like this is my duty I'm the queen I need to save my people so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. When Nora sets off to go meet her betrothed something happens conflict ensues and that's about as specific as I'm going to get. Probably won't talk too much about the plot any further but it does involve the Shadow King. It does talk about that on the back. He is definitely a player in this book. So where I'm at in the book now I am enjoying the plot of this book a lot more. I think as I said yesterday amnesia trope is just not for me and I just wasn't super intrigued by that and just seeing Nora refamiliarize herself I was kind of like okay I just kind of want the plot to start like it was a little bit boring for me but now things are a little bit more interesting. That conflict that was presented definitely gave the story some life I think in sort of the change in direction that this book was going but I think one of the issues I am having with this book is the characters so our main girl Nora you know there's nothing wrong with her necessarily but that might be part of the problem she is just a bit bland for me. Like I just feel like she doesn't really have a lot of personality. I feel like I'm not really getting to know her very well. And to be fair, she doesn't really know herself very well either. So maybe this is by design, but as a reader, I'm just not very entertained by her. And I just feel like I don't really see her show a lot of personality. Whatever that personality is, good or bad, I just want more from her. I feel like she is very just surface level. I feel like she doesn't really show a lot of herself, even in her like inner monologue. I wish that I got to know her a bit more. So I am struggling a bit with that. Alexander, who is the commander of her army and he's kind of her right hand man when she is queen, he has been a little bit boring as well. The Shadow King, is a little bit more interesting. He's got a little bit more to him, a little bit more depth, but still like, I think overall the character work of this book is not my favorite. And I just feel like we're missing those like small intimate moments between characters that show their personality, that banter and not even like romantic banter. I'm just talking about banter at all. I feel like we are missing from the book when Nora is meeting new people, when there's these political conversations, I feel like we could still give more personality with those. And so I am struggling a little bit with that. And that also makes the romances multiple because this is kind of a love triangle, just sort of stale as well. They're just not really doing anything for me. I'm not really getting excited by any of the characters or their romance. There are moments. It's not like completely flatlined, but I just want more. You know, I want more from the characters. I want to be more excited about the romance. I don't feel tension. I don't feel like anticipation or excitement or when the characters are angry, they don't really feel angry, you know? So I'm struggling a little bit with the writing in that aspect. So that is kind of where I'm at. I think the plot line is getting more interesting. I love the presentation of this conflict because frankly, I think this book really needed it, but I don't know if our main characters are enough to carry my interest. I'll see. I'll see how I feel once I finish this book, but um, it's okay right now. I also could provide a little bit of an update on Done and Dusted. I don't have the book with me, but you guys remember what it looks like, right? That cover art is burned in my brain forever. I'm on page like 170, I want to say, and I think I was on page 100 yesterday, and I'm actually really enjoying the book a lot more. I still, you know, kind of stand by my feelings of in the beginning things are presented very much in a telling versus showing way. I wish that we could have seen a bit more but now I'm just having a lot of fun with this book and I think overall this is just like a fun light happy read and that's just what I needed right now. I think that this book has really strong characterization which is lacking a little bit in North Queen and I just love the banter between our characters. There's a ton of anticipation and like butterflies between them and they're just great together. Honestly, I just read this really amazing scene where they go into the woods and they go like swimming in this pond lake situation. And that was so, so sweet. And I just loved seeing those interactions between them. And I just think that the dialogue is really great between these characters as well. So I'm having a really good time with this. This book is making me really happy. Super glad that I picked this up after having my heart and brain destroyed by When the Moon Hatched. Okay, this is, I didn't vlog When the Moon Hatched. This is going to be my vlog for When the Moon Hatched. This was so good. <laughs> 
<laughs> can we just take a moment? I know that this is not like the focus of this video, but this was so, so good. Oh my God. I am just so happy that I read this. Like I feel lucky to have read this. I was tearing up yesterday thinking about this book. That is how like not okay I am up here because truly the connections that I felt to these characters and their romance, this is like a heartbreaking, beautiful, just ride that you go on and I loved it so much and the writing is so beautiful. It's like poetic at times. I don't think everyone is gonna like the writing style. I think it's one of those like you either like it or you don't. Not a lot of middle ground because the writing can get very very flowery and poetic at times. I really liked it and connected to it like right away. First chapter I was like yep absolutely I'm in it but I could understand if someone was like, eh, I just don't really connect with the writing style. I don't really like it. I get that. But for those of you who do give this book a shot and really enjoy the writing, like have so much fun and good luck at the same time. Oh my God. I just, yeah, I love this so much. I was looking through some of my annotations. I kind of want to reread it to be honest with you and just look at some of the foreshadowing that happens. You guys, it's so good. This book is so, so good. This is like not only you know, obviously gonna be one of my best books of 2024, but this is like one of my new all-time favorite books, period, end of sentence. Like I think this is so good. Oh my God, I just, okay, I need to stop. This this isn't what this video is about, but I just wanted to give her a moment because I'm very mad at myself for not vlogging. I, I do wish that I could have shared that experience with you all, but regardless, this was great. And I'm probably never gonna shut up about it, to be honest with you. You guys are gonna hear about this book all year. Get ready. Back to the matter at hand. We're gonna go finish North Queen. I'll probably read a little bit of Done and Dusted later. I will probably start Vows and Ruins maybe tonight. So I will talk to you guys probably tomorrow with more updates. Hello, my stunning besties. Happy Tuesday. How are we? I, for one, am doing amazing because it is so sunny out right now. I know I'm being delusional because this is probably like a fall spring moment and we're going to go back to gray and rainy for the next like two months, but it truly just feels like summer today and I am just so, so happy. I am also very excited because I have lots of reading updates for you all. So let's get into those. I did finish North Queen. I'm almost done with Done and Dusted and then I started Vows and Ruins. So let me give you my thoughts on all of those books very quickly. Number one, Done and Dusted. I am almost done with this book. I probably could have finished this last night, but I was getting tired and I just want to savor the end of this book because this has been so much fun. Like you guys, I love this so much. This ranch, cowboy, small town romance. It's giving me everything that I want. And the characters are just so fantastic. The tension between them, the banter is so much fun. Watching them fall in love is everything to me. The found family, I am so here for. The spice was incredible. Chef's kiss, no notes. I think that this book is so much fun. I'm loving it. And something very exciting about this series is today the second book came out and that is Swift and Saddled which can we once again take a moment for the cover. I love this art style. I also love our female main character here. She is giving me like Kristen Ritter from Breaking Bad. That is who I will be fan casting in my head while I read this and a movie simultaneously plays in my head. Her style is just everything and I'm really, really excited about these two. We've already been introduced to the male main character in this book and then there have been mentions of our female main character. So I can't wait to pick this up. I might try to squeeze this into my March TBR because I'm just living for this book series. All right, and then next let's discuss North Queen, which I did finish this last night and a lot of my feelings that I had yesterday did pretty much stay the same throughout the ending of this book. I just wanted more. I wanted to feel so much more. I wanted to be excited about so much more with this book and I just wasn't. I do think that there's a pretty decent plotline happening here. Once Nora left Mercia and was sort of venturing out and some conflict occurred, like I was definitely more into that, but I just find these characters to be not very exciting. They do not do a lot for me. I do not feel a lot. I think that's kind of my biggest thing. I'm not really feeling a lot while reading this book. I'm not feeling excited. I'm not feeling tension. I'm not feeling like, oh my God, what's going to happen? And that is necessary for me to enjoy a book. I go a lot off of emotions and how does a book make me feel? And do I feel like I'm on an adventure with these characters? Do I feel invested in their growth and in their romance? And I don't, I, I just don't. And I don't know why, but I just didn't really connect with this writing style. I don't think it's like a bad writing style or anything like that, but for whatever reason, me and this book, we just didn't click. So I'm going to give this book two stars. Not a bad book, just not for me, I think. All right. And then last, but certainly not least, I have started the final book for this vlog and that is going to be Vows and Ruins by Helen Shorer, second book in the Legends of Thesmar series. So I'm not going to talk about what is happening in this book as it is a sequel. I don't want to spoil anything, but I am really, really enjoying this. And I did like Blood and Steel. I wasn't obsessed, but I enjoyed it. It was, it was perfectly fine. This is feeling better already. I'm really feeling engaged with the problems that are arising between our characters. We have also had some very interesting, like, 
plot conflict introduced that I think is going to have a major effect on our main character Thea and Wilder and possibly just everything. I don't know. But that makes me really excited. I feel like we have beefed up the plot a little bit in book two, which normally does happen, of course, in a fantasy romance series. But I'm just happy to see that because there's a lot more at stake here. And we have a lot more magic system and history that has been introduced. And I'm really here for it. And Thea and Wilder are just like, they argue so much and I'm so here for it. I do really like the way that Helen Ishwar writes romance. I think she does a really good job at creating that tension, at creating that banter, at giving our characters legitimate reason to disagree, but then also keeping that like, but I want you so bad, you know, underlying feeling. So this has been a lot of fun so far. I barely started this book. I think I'm literally on like page 80. So I still have quite a ways to go, but I will definitely let you guys know how this goes as I read it further. So that's gonna be it for this update. I am going to go finish Done and Dusted. I will read more of Vows and Ruins and I will talk to you guys later with more thoughts. Hello, bestie friends. Happy Thursday. Okay, so I have a very exciting reading check-in that I want to do with you all. It's gonna be about Vows and Ruins. I am 60% of the way through this book and I'm really, really excited to talk about it. But before we talk books, can we please talk Love is Blind? Can we just have a quick little bestie chat about the season six finale of Love is Blind? So I'm gonna say now, spoilers for Love is Blind season six finale. If you have not watched the final episode, just skip ahead to when I'm holding up Thousand Ruins and you can just, or if you're just like not here for the Love is Blind chat, that's totally fine. You just wanna know what I think about Thousand Ruins, skip ahead as well. But for those of you who absolutely eat up, Love is blind the way that I do. Can we just take a minute to, you know, kind of decompress from what a wild season that was? Overall, I will say I really liked the season as far as like entertainment goes. Last season, season five, was a mess and like not in a fun way. I feel like this season had a lot of good mess and it was very, very entertaining. And I also think that there were a lot of like individual people who were very easy to root for. And then of course we have Amy and Johnny. Oh my God, I was sobbing. Like I cannot stress that enough. I was sobbing when she was walking down the aisle with her dad and with her brother and just their entire wedding segment was fantastic. Their families are just such pure hearted people. I was just overwhelmed watching how welcoming they were to each other, how warm they were to each other. Amy's dad, I, I can't, I can't even talk about it. His speech in her little dressing room was so beautiful. What good people, you know, like I feel like so often on Love is Blind and just like reality dating shows in general. We see a lot of villains. Amy's family is just like too good for this earth. And Johnny's sisters as well. They're so excited about Amy and it's just so beautiful to see. They are everything, they are perfect. They just, you know, their success goes to show that Love is Blind can be successful because of course we have like Lauren and Cameron from season one. We have Brett and Tiffany from the Seattle season. They're so great together. And then Amy and Johnny just really feel like they were meant to be together. But as far as everyone else goes, I am so happy that Chelsea and Jimmy did not get married. Oh my God. Look, they both need to do some healing, do some soul searching. I don't think that they're good together. Honestly, I have never felt that they were like all that good together, even from the very beginning. I feel like they just got along. So they just decided to get engaged and make this thing work, but they just actually don't seem very compatible. And then, I mean, they both have their own like personal issues. I just never really saw them as like, this super in love and excited about each other type of couple. So I'm honestly really glad that Jimmy pulled the plug on that. I think they're just absolutely not meant to be together. And then AD and Clay. AD was my favorite person from this season. She was just so full of life. She was so kind. She was so caring and she was so funny too. Like I just absolutely loved watching her, but I feel like she was just giving way more in that relationship than Clay was. And I don't think Clay is a bad person. I've seen a lot of like online discourse about him. I think he's very lost and he needs to grow up a little bit, but there were moments throughout the season that he did really endear himself to me. Obviously the whole like being afraid of cheating because his dad cheated, you know, cheating is not genetic, Clay. I can partially understand not having the successful relationship role model situation. I can understand that for sure, but it just seemed like such a weird thing that he constantly brought up. Um, I don't think he's a bad person. I think, I think he needs to grow and maybe just some therapy and kind of just work on how he views relationships, but I don't think that they should be together. And also AD was just breaking my heart. She said something like, why is it never me? Why am I never good enough? And I'm like, you are literal perfection. You are beautiful. You are fun loving. You love so, so hard. And she also said something else too, kind of during her breakdown scene where she's like, every time I'm in a relationship, I'm like carrying things. I'm putting everything into it to make the relationship work. And I'm like, you shouldn't do that. Like you should just be absolutely loved on. You should be with a guy who's obsessed with you. Like 
people are doing nothing wrong. I think that you're just not ending up with the right guys, unfortunately. So I really love AD. I loved watching her. She was also like, oh my God, when she did the dressing down of Sarah Ann, I was so here for it. Like she's amazing. I really love her and I hope that she is happy. I'm so excited for the reunion. I need the updates on everyone. A lot of times these couples continue to date even after they say no. So I hope that AD and Clay aren't doing that, but we'll see. I'm just really happy for Amy and Johnny. I'm honestly really happy for Chelsea and Jimmy that they didn't get married. And I hope that AD is okay. And I hope that Clay is okay. He's gotta grow for sure. But so those are just some thoughts I wanted to share with you guys. But the season was really good. Like I, look, Love is Blind is, you know, it's a reality dating TV show, but I love it. I eat it up every single time. It is trash and I'm a little raccoon rifling through it and absolutely having a great time. Okay, so now let's move on to my reading update, Thousand Ruins. I've spent a good portion of the day listening to this audiobook and making my way through. And I'm really liking this and I'm so, so happy because the issues that I had with the first book, Blood and Steel, are being resolved in this book quite a bit. I actually went back and watched my October wrap up because I read Blood and Steel in October. And I was like, I wanna refresh my mind on how I felt about Blood and Steel when I finished it. And two things that I talked about were, number one, Wilder Hawthorne, who is our male main character. He just didn't feel like as present as I feel like the male main character should have. I felt like he was gone a lot, but we were still supposed to be kind of bought in on this romance and it didn't really work for me. And then the second thing also was, I felt like some of the conflicts that were brought up in that book were just like, not very believable or just kind of like I rolled my eyes a little bit at them and I truly feel like in this book we have gotten a lot of improvement in both of those areas. Number one, Wilder is everywhere. Okay, Wilder is absolutely everywhere. We have his POV constantly. He is with Thea all the time and there's just a big focus on their relationship and the biggest strength I think of this book versus Blood and Steel, there is so much romance development happening in this book. I kind of feel like in the first book it was you know a little bit here and there but we are actually seeing our characters get to know one another beyond the lustful attraction, beyond the, oh, you're the trainer, I'm the trainee, or at odds. They're actually diving deep into who is Wilder, who is Thea, and how do these people get along? How compatible are these two people? And I really appreciated that because I feel like that was desperately needed in book one, and we are getting that in book two. And then as far as like the conveniences and some of the conflicts and things that were brought up in book one, we have more conflict in this book, more plotline being added, and I feel like they are just so much more interesting and so much more consequential sequential for whatever is going to happen with our characters. So I'm really glad about that. I do think that some of the things in book one were definitely there to be a setup for book two. I don't want to say that Blood and Steel entirely is like a setup book, but also like aren't all books in a series kind of setting up the next book in a series? I don't know. But all in all, I just want to say that this is an improvement to Blood and Steel for sure. And like, I do definitely think you should pick this series up. The first book to me is just like good, not great, but I swear I see people every single day on Bookstagram giving that five stars, absolutely loving it, and just falling in love with the series as a whole. So I definitely think you should try it out because book two has made me fully invested in this series and really excited about it. And I will 100% be continuing on with the series and hopefully finishing it this year. I know that Fates and Furies is the third book and that just came out. And then the author did just announce the title of the fourth book. And I think that's the finale. So we might get the entire series this year, which is very exciting. I am loving, okay, I'm just like fully going off on a tangent now. Can I just say, I am loving the fact that I have made a conscious effort to not necessarily like binge series, but to just read books in a series closer together. I used to do this insane thing, insane for my brain, because it just doesn't work for my brain, where I would read the first book in a series and be like, oh my God, love that four stars, and then wouldn't pick up book two, like, at all, or it would be like 10 months later and then I'd be starting book two and I'd be like, wow, I don't remember anything. I feel very disconnected from these characters, from this romance, from this plot line. And this year I wanted to make a point to just read more series and read them closer together and just have this kind of full experience with the series as a whole. And I have made an effort to do that this year, specifically with like the Kindred's Curse saga, with Vows and Ruins. I mean, I read Blood and Steel like three or four months ago, but I definitely want to read the third book in the series like next month so that I can stay up to date with it. And it has made all the world of difference. I just feel so much more invested in the series and so much more excited about it. Instead of like, oh, I picked up a book and then a year later, I'm like, well, I guess I should continue on with book two when it's been out the entire time. I'm really happy that I'm doing that. And it's making me have like way more fun with reading. So that's really worked for me. 10 out of 10 recommend. Obviously, if the next book in the series is not out, there's nothing we can do about that. But if you have access to like, like multiple books in the series, really try to read them back to back. Don't, don't do what past me did, okay? I don't, I don't know her. She seems nice, but she was a little bit misguided. I'm definitely going to make a point to always try to read series fairly close within reason back to back because it just makes a world of difference. So 
wow, apparently I'm feeling chatty today. I am probably gonna go finish this and then I'm also gonna finish Done and Dusted. So I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Hi, okay, it's like two seconds later. You guys thought you got rid of me, but you in fact did not because I just had three packages delivered. So I started to open one and then I was like, wait, I should unbox these on camera for the besties. Two of them are books and then one of them is clothes. So I thought that'd be fun to share as well. So I did already rip into one of the packages because I have no self-control. So let me start with that one. So I got Heartless Hunter. This was a pre-order and this is by Chris Kristen Cicarelli? Cicarelli? I apologize, I'm sure I'm uh, mispronouncing that, but let's look at this cover. Absolutely beautiful. This is the first book in the Crimson Moth series, and I believe that this is a book about a witch and a witch hunter, enemies to lovers. I think it is YA. Don't quote me on that, but I think it is a YA fantasy romance, but I love the idea of a witch and witch hunter falling in love with each other. Like, that just sounds amazing, and I've heard good things by a few people who have already started this book, so I'm very, very excited about this. All right, and then the next package is PR from Bloom Publishing. I am very excited about this book. Their packaging is also so cute. Look at your next fae romanticy obsession is here. I'm so ready besties. Let's go. Okay, so they sent. Oh, oh my god. I didn't realize this was an arc. How cool. This is How Does It Feel by Janine O'Reilly. So this book was, I believe, originally indie published and then Bloom picked it up and is putting it out with new covers. And I didn't realize that it wasn't out yet. I've never gotten an arc before. This is so exciting. So the tropes are a fae prince who wants to kill you. Love that. Spicy times. Excellent. Stem heroine. Dark romanticy. Villain gets the girl, as he should. And captor captive. Love. Oh my god. I have not read enough captor captive fantasy romances. I am so excited for this. Callie Peterson of the human realm as prince of the unseelie court i offer you a deal i think she's gonna accept the deal you guys i'm very excited oh we also have amazing fan art look at how gorgeous oh and they also sent stickers oh we have a little like moth so adorable oh and then another moth and this one's green how cute oh my god thank you so much bloom this is awesome i've also heard that it is good for if you're a fan of serpent in the wings of night which we obviously know the crowns and axia series is my religion so very excited to try this out i really hope that i love this all right and then finally we have two shirts from urban outfitters so i've been trying to wear more color as I'm sitting here in a black long sleeve shirt, but I really am. If you've noticed in this vlog and then in a few like recent videos, I've been wearing pink more. I've just realized I really like wearing pink and I want to wear it more. And I just don't have a lot of color in my wardrobe. Like everything is neutral. I have blacks, whites, tan, and like olive green is like as crazy as we get over here with color. But I'm realizing that wearing color is fun. What a concept. So I have been ordering like pink tops. I ordered like this lilac top, mostly from Abercrombie, but then I have recently got a few things from Urban Outfitters and ordered a little bit more. So number one, I got this like sky blue lacy top. This is what the top looks like. This is the exact same top as the top that I wore in my February wrap up. So if you saw that and you were like, hey, that's a cute top. I thought so as well. So I decided to order it in blue. It's a really, really pretty shade of blue. So I'm very excited to wear this. I am somebody who like, if I find one shirt that I like, I'm gonna order it in every single color. So that is what I've done. But yeah, I'm excited to wear this. I think it'll look really pretty. And then I also ordered just the most unabashedly pink top. So this is like an off the shoulder, long sleeve, kind of like hot pink, very Barbie moment that I'm really excited about. This is also super soft and stretchy as well. I love the material. So this is my haul. I'm uh, very excited about it. Okay, now I'm really gonna leave you guys alone and I'm gonna go read and we will talk tomorrow. Hello, beautiful people. Good morning. How are we doing? I am here to give you guys my final thoughts on Done and Dusted and Vows and Ruins and then close out this week's reading vlog. So let's start with Done and Dusted. So after finishing Done and Dusted yesterday, I can truly say this was just so much fun. I had such a good time with this book. This book just made me so, so happy and I think that's what I like about small town romance. There is a wholesomeness. There is just this joyful feeling throughout the book. And I got so many butterflies from these characters. And even though it was very wholesome, there was also like amazing spice scenes in this book. So overall, I think that this was an absolute hit. I am going to give this book a four star rating though, not quite a five star. The only reason is, and I did kind of already talk about this in the beginning, I really wish that we could have gotten to know our characters a little bit more and also establish who they were to each other a little bit more before we moved into the like romance romantic aspect of their relationship because the book does just sort of start out where our female main character Emmy is just saying oh yeah that's Luke Brooks he's my brother's best friend like he was kind of a bad boy and then we very quickly turn to the two of them having this very strong attraction to each other so I would have just liked a little bit more time to get to know them to get to know what their relationship was prior because I feel like that would have made me feel a little bit more for the transition of being kind of just like 
acquaintances slash friends to lovers. But the rest of the book really did make up for that. I feel like we got to see our characters really fall in love. I loved them together. I thought that they were so, so cute. And the way that they supported one another was just really beautiful. So I had such a good time with this. Four star book, absolutely loved it. If you are a Chestnut Springs girly, you should definitely pick this book up because it's going to give you that same vibe. I just love a small town romance. I really do. I think I've discovered that about myself. I really loved the setting. I loved the found family. Everything really worked for me and I'm super excited about this series. All right, and then I also finished Vows and Ruins and you guys, this was so good. I just feel so happy about this book because I truly do think it was a step up from Blood and Steel and I'm so happy to see that because I wanted to like this series. I see so many people talking about how it's one of their all-time favorites and I wanted to get there and I really did with this book. As I said, I think that a lot of the issues I had with the first book were resolved in book two. I feel like we got so much more romantic development. I feel like we got so much more backstory, history, building this world, getting more into the lore of this world and why things are the way that they are and why these conflicts between our characters really matter. We also had new conflicts presented, which I think are just so much more interesting and are gonna have like very lasting effects on the series as a whole. And the ending of this book, I am so here for. I love a shocking ending where you don't really understand the motivations of a character when they do something wild. I'll leave it at that. But that's how I felt when I finished this book. I was like, wow, I can't believe so-and-so did this. Why did they do this? What are they doing? What is the grand plan here? It was very, very shocking to me and I loved it. And it also sets up book three, I think in a really nice way. I also feel like because of how this book ended, we're gonna get a lot of amazing found family in book three, which we definitely got in this book as well. One of the strengths of this book for sure is also the found family aspect. I really love Thea's group of friends. Kip and Cal are just so funny and are a very needed comic relief aspect of this book. So I really enjoyed that. And the romance was great as well. If you are somebody who likes a lot of spicy scenes in your fantasy romance, you were gonna get that here. It was frequent. It was almost to the point at times that I was like, okay, like let's let's keep it moving people. Like it does get a little bit gratuitous at times, but I still did enjoy myself. I do like the romance aspect of this book, but just for any of you who are looking for a lot of that, you're gonna get that in this book. But I also think that the author did a great job at, as I said, you know, kind of beefing up the plot. So I feel like there was a good balance here and I wasn't too overwhelmed with that aspect of this. So I'm going to give this book four stars, very strong book. I'm so excited about the third book. I definitely wanna pick it up very soon. And I definitely recommend this series. It's really, really good. It's also a little bit different from your typical fantasy romance series. It's not like a fae fantasy romance. There's not a ton of like royalty aspects. There is a little bit, but it more focuses on being a warrior, on training, on fighting, on battle. And I really like that grittier aspect to this fantasy romance series. All right, so that is going to be it for this week's vlog. If you made it to this point in the video and you wanted to let me know, go ahead and leave one of the moon emojis for when the moon hatched, the guest star of this reading vlog. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram and Goodreads there always linked down below. I really appreciate that you watched this video. I hope that you have a fantastic day. I love you all so, so much, and I will catch you guys in the next one.